Hello and welcome to this Sot and Brain Hub video covering the movements of the extraocular muscles of the eye and the innovation. This is a quick recap. So often the eye movements are considered tricky and that's because there's three axes of movement. There's the vertical axis which offers abduction and adduction. We have a horizontal axis which offers elevation and depression. And we have an anterior posterior axis which offers internal and external rotation, sometimes referred to as medial or lateral rotation. So let's start off by looking at the muscle on top of the eye. That's called the superior rectus muscle. Now we can quite logically understand and appreciate how this would elevate the eye, but due to its oblique uh, insertion onto the eye from the axis of the orbit, not the axis of the eye, we also get adduction and medial rotation as well. We mustn't forget those. Small amounts of adduction and medial rotation are parts of the movement associated with superior rectus. Next up we have the medial rectus, a very straightforward muscle, one simple movement and that is adduction. That's movement towards the nose. Its counterpart muscle is the lateral rectus muscle. Again, very straightforward muscle. This is all about abduction, movement away from the nose. The inferior rectus muscle offers depression, which we can appreciate logically, but also due to that oblique insertion, we get adduction and lateral rotation. The oblique muscles are quite tricky. We've got the superior oblique offering depression, abduction and medial rotation, while the inferior oblique offers elevation abduction and lateral rotation. So the superior oblique and the inferior oblique, a little bit more tricky to understand. Looking on the next diagram, we can see a different view of the eye from a posterior view. We can see the superior rectus again. This is inserting on an oblique angle coming from the axis of the orbit. So don't forget those additional movements to elevation. Remember I said they were adduction and medial rotation. Medial rectus straightforward, we can see that with the optic nerve cut away. That's all about adduction. Lateral rectus is cut in this diagram. Again, that's all about abduction. We have the inferior rectus muscle. Depression is the obvious one, but don't forget small amounts of adduction and lateral rotation. Then we have the oblique muscles, the inferior oblique, elevation, adduction, and lateral rotation with the superior oblique offering depression, abduction, and medial rotation. Now, on top of all this, we mustn't forget one final muscle. It's not involved in moving the eye. It's involved in moving the eyelid. This is called levator palpebrae superioris, and it is superior to the superior rectus muscle, and it works to elevate the eyelid. So most of these muscles are innervated by the ocular motor nerve. That includes the superior rectus, the medial rectus, the inferior oblique and the inferior rectus. The ocular motor nerve comes from the midbrain, travels through the cavernous sinus and through the superior orbital fissure to get to those muscles. The trochlear nerve innervates the superior oblique muscle. Again, it comes from the midbrain. It travels through the cavernous sinus and through the superior orbital fissure. It innervates the superior oblique muscle. The abducent nerve is going to innervate only the lateral rectus muscle. It comes from between the pons and the medulla travels through the cavernous sinus and again through that superior orbital fissure. The ocular motor nerve can be seen quite easily in the orbit. The trochlear nerve innervates the superior oblique muscle on its superior edge and the abducent nerve innervates the lateral rectus muscle on its medial surface and that's the best place to look for it. So I hope you found this video useful. See you again next time. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.